We just come in here to fellowship with each other and worship the Lord. Amen. How many of you still excited about Jesus? Yeah. Amen. 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 Because he's excited about you. Amen. Amen. We all will just stand real quick and go into prayer. And we're going straight to our praise and worship. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and praise you, God, for bringing us here safely, God, for meeting us here, God. We thank you for your word that's coming forth, God. I thank you for all those that have pressed their way out just to praise and to magnify your name and to lift you up. God, bless all those that are on their way. Bless those that weren't able to come out, God, for whatever reason, Father, send your word to them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for healing and deliverance. We thank you for unity, strength, power, anointing. God, we thank you for salvation, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for peace right now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for strength, God. God, we just thank you for just everything and just being God all by yourselves in our life, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Clap your hands for Jesus again. <laughs> amen. Amen. Come on up, praise team. Now y'all know the song I'm singing when I hear y'all How many of you know he reigns? Amen. I want to hear everybody sing them loud. Amen. Come on and get up on your feet. Amen. I know some of y'all may have had a long half a week and get tired. But you know what? God is still worthy of all my praises. Amen. He deserves nothing less. He only deserves the best from us.
man that God had given to me and was dealing with me first and just checking myself. And I hope that this word blesses somebody else. Amen. You turn to Romans 6, 13. And I'm going to talk about the heart of a worshiper. Amen. Romans 6.13. And it reads as, okay, do you have it? Say it. Amen. Amen. Alright. It says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. The heart of a worshiper. Surrender is an unpopular word, disliked almost as much as submission. It implies losing and no one wants to be a loser. Surrender evokes the unpleasant images of admitting defeat in battle, forfeiting a game, or yielding to a stronger opponent. How many of you have ever played the game Monopoly? And how many are very competitive when it comes to Monopoly? Amen. We got a few hands. All right. That's right. Be honest with yourselves. Amen. And when it comes down to the properties, amen, and you want and you just like, man, I've got all these properties, but I don't want to surrender up these properties because it means I have to go back around the world trying to find a way to buy back these properties and I'm getting all this money. Well, then when you land on somebody who has park place or boardwalk and you don't have the money to pay that rent, what do you have to do? Mortgage back some of that property. Amen. And that's kind of like a surrender. Like, man, I got the orange. I got the red. I got almost the green. Amen. I got all of the brown. And I don't have no money to pay park place because park place is going to properties and that's the most expensive property on the board. But somebody else done got it, and they done put houses on there and say, oh, you owe me $15,000. Oh, 15000 really? Okay, I got to turn this card over. And that is like admitting to me because you're like, man, now they either get my property or they get all my money. And I'm feeling like I'm not in the game. And I'm not very good at that because honey's just good. He used to get all that property. And he says, you know what, all right. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You either give me your green, or I can take all your money. <laughs> Wait a I want you to take all my money, but I want some property. So we don't like we don't like surrender. We don't like that word surrender. We hear that word surrender even in the battles. They wave that white flag. Oh, we give up. We give up. We don't want you to kill no more of our men. Surrender. In today's culture, we are taught to never give up, never give in. If winning is everything, surrender is unthinkable. You're all, we're always told, you know, never give up, never give in. You know, keep going, keep going. You got to succeed, 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 succeed. But in this, surrender is a very good thing. We would rather talk about winning, succeeding, overcoming, and conquering. Surrender to God is the heart of worship. We give ourselves to God not out of fear or duty, but in love because he first <laughs> loved us. Amen. That is why we surrender to him. That's why we give our heart to him. Not out of fear. Not out of fear of going to hell. Not out of duty. Oh, I got to make sure I go to church. And it's not something that is, comes ritualistic. You know, every day is what we do. This is what I do. But it is a lifestyle. Your heart of virtue. You're surrendering to God because you love him. Amen. You do whatever he asks you to do because he loved you first. That is what surrender is. True worship is bringing God pleasure. And we want to make God happy, don't we? Amen. Don't we want God to be pleased with our service? Amen? Amen. Three barriers that block our total surrender to God. The first one is fear. Can I trust God? Come on, man. That's the, and I think that's a lot that a lot of people cannot trust him because we've been broken, we've been hurt in the past by other folks. 
Again, I tell you, do not put God on the same playing field as man. God is so much better than man. Amen. God will not do us like man does. Us. Amen. 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 Fear keeps us from surrendering, but love casts out all fear. Isn't that what the word says? Love Amen. casts out all fear. The more we realize how much God loves us, the easier it is to surrender to him. When we, realize, when we really see, read his word, really, really think about how much God loves us. Think about everything that we done got caught up in, everything that we were doing. Just, I mean, just think about your whole, just go back, do a glimpse real quick. Don't stay there. Just go back. Think about how God kept us and protected us. He gave his only son for us. His son was doing nothing wrong, but sent his son down to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have a right to treat him so that we could have a right to see him oh, in the yeah. end. That's how much he loves us. To grant us brand new mercies every day is sure enough true love for us. Amen. God loves us. I know we've heard that word so much before. I love you. I love you. Girl, you know I love you. I love you. That word is tossed around so much, it's lost the intensity that is truly, that is what it truly mean. The intensity is lost because everyone says it. I love you, I love you, with no real meaning behind it. But when God says he loves you, he shows you. He really means it. Amen? Amen. Our second barrier is pride. Admitting our limitations. The desire to have so much control is the cause of so much stress. We have to have control of everything. We got to be in control of this time and this day, when this happens, how this happens, when it comes, when it goes. Because we lose, we feel like we're losing control. It's like, ah, I don't know. Why can't I have this? Why is not this not going right? Because it's not about us. It's about Jesus and what he wants to do in us. We are creatures of um, got to have it now, this way, that way. If it doesn't fit my way, then I don't like it. We like to be spoiled. And then when we give in to God, God doesn't spoil us. He says, I need to chip away some things of you because I need to use you for a greater purpose. And we think, what greater purpose? What greater purpose are you going to use me by chipping away all this? I, I, I'm not comfortable like this. I don't like this feeling. He says, but when you let me get finished doing what I need to do in you, you'll see. Our struggle is not with life, but with God. Because we always say life is a struggle. It's not with life, it's with God. Because God is trying to mold us, make us, and shape us. And we struggle with him because the mold in us is it, hard. It's kind of like, ah. You ever seen, uh, how many of you have ever been to a potter's or been to a place where they make uh, bowls or vases from scratch? And you see a potter work with his hands and with the clay? Okay, you know how the potter puts the clay on the wheel. And he's turning around with one foot, and on this circle is this big glob of clay with no shape, no form, no nothing. It's just there. But once the potter, the potter starts working with it, he starts turning that wheel, and he starts molding the clay. Turning it around, the wheel is going, the foot is going, and he puts a little water on it so that the clay stays moist. And so he just keeps turning that wheel, turning the wheel, turning the wheel, turning the wheel. As soon as you see, the clay starts forming into a beautiful vase. You know, and if you ever, I'm going to put this down. If you ever see when the potter works with the clay, he has one hand on the outside of the clay and the other hand on the inside. While the wheel is still turning, he is shaping the clay while protecting it so it doesn't break or fall. That's what he does with us. We're that clay on that wheel. And the wheel is life. And while life is still going, he's still molding us and making us on that spindle. And he his hands on the inside of us, getting out all that stuff that don't need to be there. And his hands on the outside shaping us. So he's doing all that, working on the inside and outside of us. Takes a little water so we don't get dry. Keeps us moist. Keeps us deprived. He encourages our soul. And while he's doing that, he keeps shaping it and moving around. So he's doing this, doing this. And before you know it, when it's all said and done, there's a beautiful face or pop on the, on the spindle or on the, on the plate. Amen. And then he puts that, that, that vase or bowl or whatever in the furnace. Those are our trials and tribulations. If we're going to learn how to worship, we have to learn to worship through the trials and tribulations. So he puts us in that fire. He, the pottery 
the pot of the uh, pot of pizza clay in the furnace and turns that furnace up to so it can get hot. But he has to seal the moldness, and that's what he's trying to—he's trying to seal the anointing that God has put in us, seal the strength that God has put in us by going through. If we don't never go through anything, then we're forever cracking and breaking all over the place because we don't know how to stand. Uh -huh. Amen. But with God's anointing. His hand guiding us, keeping us. We know how to withstand some things. And no, it don't feel good. I'm pretty sure that clay is like, okay, you can stop spinning me right now. Really? You're going to put me in the fire? Woo, it sure is hot in here. But you know what? When I come out of here, then he's going to adorn me. I'm going to look good with all these pretty colors, with blues and purples and yellows and red. And that's what God, he adorns us with the Holy Spirit. And it looks so good when we're walking in the spirit. Amen? When we're not walking in the fucking world, we're walking in the spirit. We look so pleasing to others that you'll find people are drawn to you. You're like, okay, really? And sometimes the anointing can be a little scary. Because you're like, okay, Lord, help me with this. Because I don't want to misuse your anointing. I don't want to uh, uh, lead the people wrong. So if people will be drawn to you. Because they want to be around you because they they love the anointing that's oozing from us. Amen? So we want to have that heart of worship. The last barrier is confusion. Surrendering to God is not passive, passive resignation or an excuse for laziness. Mm. Surrendering to God is not sitting back and saying, oh, okay, well, you know, it's just the way it is and just I'm, I'm not going to do anything about it. No. Surrendering is not accepting the status quo. Sacrificing your life in order to change what needs to be changed. That is what surrender is. Sacrificing your pleasure. What you like to do all the time. What feels comfortable to you in order to change what needs to be changed. And see, when we get into God, we really start seeing, okay, hmm. That's not really a complimentary thing of the Lord. When he's praying, he said, Lord, show me me. I pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show me myself. Show me what you see. Show me what you don't like. And I guarantee you, God will start showing you some things that is not pleasing to his eye. He'll show you some things and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to take off you. This is what I'm trying to get you to get rid of. Because I need to use you. Like that vase that was in the fire, like in the furnace, and it got heated up and it was molded, and then the potter painted it and decorated it, it just looked just wonderful, it had a nice shine to it. It don't stay in the potter's house. Now it's sent out to a store somewhere so where somebody can buy it and can use it for whatever they like. It can sit on a shelf looking gorgeous, it can hold flowers, it can hold beads. Whatever the person that is using that vessel, it gets, it's used for that purpose. God wants to be able to use us for his purpose without us fighting him. Saying, no, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I don't like that. That don't feel good. Why do I? I say, why do I? Why me? Why do I? Lord, I can choose somebody else. I'm not a minister or a missionary. God didn't call me into that. But when he said yes, he called us into the work of the Lord. Amen. He called us into encouraging somebody else. He called us into giving someone else the word. He called us into praying for one another. So it's not about, oh, I have to be called into this specific title. No, when you answered the call, you said, yes, you have been called into the work. You are a disciple of Christ. Whether you want to accept it or not, you are a disciple of Christ. So now it's up to us to find out, Lord, what do you want me to do? I want to have this heart of worship. But I can't have this heart of worship if I haven't surrendered everything to you. He can't use us like he needs us if we have not surrendered our whole heart. It's good to come, but if we don't get anything out of coming here, if we don't get anything out of the word, if we don't apply it, then what are we worshiping? We're going to worship something. We're going to submit to something or someone. How many of you find yourselves surrendering to that job? When that job calls, you say, I need you to come back in. After you got off of a 12-hour shift or a 7-hour shift, that job calls you in about, what, three hours? Say, oh, we need you to come back in. Really? You need me to come back in? And what do you do? You go back in. Because you know what? You're getting a paycheck. If you go back in, you don't. You get reprimanded. You get written up. 
We find ourselves surrendering to school. I gotta get these grades. So if I don't make the grade, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do in the schoolwork, I won't get the grade and I won't graduate. So we surrender to the school teachers, to the school. We surrender, amen, to our money situation. Oh, I gotta make this money. I gotta make sure this is taken care of, this is taken care of. I gotta do what I gotta do to make sure that everything is copacetic in my home. We surrender to that. And we and Pastor talks about it, we find it easier to surrender to other things, but won't surrender to God. Because flesh is telling us you're not gonna be able to do what you want to do. These little things that you like to do on the side that don't nobody know about that feel good to you, you're not gonna be able to do that. Because when God gets a hold of you, He's gonna tell you you need to give that up. And yes, we're gonna need to give that up because it doesn't glorify God. We don't need to have it. We all know what things we struggle with. We all know things that we hold we hold back from God. We don't surrender to God because there are situations in our life that we have not given to Him. Our past roots. God, that's just too hard for you to handle. God, I don't want to deal with that no more. That was in the past. It's bygones, it's bygones. I don't have to look at it no more. But the root is still there. Because it affects how you worship, how you minister. So we say, Lord, show me me, he'll show you. That right there, you have not given to me. You have not given to me when daddy broke your heart. You have not given to me when mama didn't accept you. You have not given to me the fact that the family called you the black sheep. You have not given that to me. So we walk around like everything is okay on the outside. But on the inside, when something comes up, it's just churning, it's bubbling, it's hurting. So a true heart of worship. How many want a true heart of worship where we just withhold nothing? How many seriously withholding nothing back from him? but can give it all to him, surrendering everything, wanting to be used by God the way he wants to use us. Not how we pick and choose how we want to be used. Well, Lord, I operate over here, but I won't operate over here. No, we don't tell God what to do. He created us. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when we surrender to him, he has our best interest at heart. He won't do anything that's going to destroy us. Because the enemy wants to do that. The enemy comes but to, to kill and to steal and to destroy. But the word says, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you can't take hold of everything if you still got trash or root stuff still there. That's not this. Amen. know that there are some things you have not totally surrendered to God. Whether it's a habit, whether it's a lifestyle, whether it's, it's trial and tribulation that you feel like you just need to work out and not bother God with it. While we pray, I want you to lift your hand as a sign that you are surrendering that situation, whatever it is, to Him. Because we want to have a heart, a true heart of a worshiper. It's not just worshiping on Sunday or on Wednesday night or on Monday night, but it's worshiping when you're at your job, when you're going to the store, when you're driving down the street, when you're walking or jogging, exercising, whatever you're doing outside of the church activity. Worship is every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's worship. And if you want to be a true worshiper, then you have to surrender that very thing. And let him deal with you on that thing. No matter how much it hurts, he may bring some things up that you haven't dealt with and may bring you to tears. But once it brings you to tears, say, Lord, heal me. Take it out of me. I want to be whole. I want to be made brand new. I don't want to operate off of that stuff that's been lingering in my past or lingering around. I want to operate off of what you give me. Your anointing, your power, your might, and your strength. Amen? Amen. Lift your hand. Those that are ready to surrender. Whatever it is. And I mean, this from this night forward, you're not going to pick that back up. But you're going to give it all to him. Heavenly Father God, we thank you and we praise you, God. Because you are just so wonderful. You've been so good to us. And God, we want to worship you. A true worship. We want to be a true worshiper. Not just in, 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 in outside appearances, God, but we want that true worship in our heart. 
that we worship you with everything that we do, how we speak, how we conduct ourselves. We want to be that true worshiper. Now, Father, we're surrendering everything, every part of us. That, that, that thing that tore us apart when we were younger and we still carry around. That person that said those detrimental things to us or done things to us that just hurts to the core. We're surrendering that to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever happened that we just can't seem to let go of, God, you know all about it. We're surrendering to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. What we're saying is, God, here, this is all of me, every single last bit of me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's, God, we want you to see it all. Now, do what you need to do with us, God, in the name of Jesus. We are clay in your hands. Mold us, God. Make us. Shape us, God, in the name of Jesus. Shape the very foundation that we think is firm if it's not planted in you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we want to be used by you. We want to be willing vessels. We don't want to fight or struggle with you, God, because you know what's best for us. You have nothing but the best for us, God, in the name of Jesus. We come against everything, every thought that will try to keep us from giving everything to you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, Father, we thank you for deliverance from this night forward, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for peace, God. No more stress in the name of Jesus. No more worry, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We give it all to you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Have your way with us tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And we be forever grateful, God, in the name of Jesus. We'll give your name the praise, the glory, and honor that it is so richly to you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now clap your hands with Jesus. Amen. Right now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.